Hi everyone, Matt here. In a previous video, I've showed you how to host an entire website on a ESP8266-01 with a whopping one megabyte of flash uh, storage. Now, the webcam has been uh, online for the best part of uh, 2018, a part of the time when I forgot to upload the public IP address, and uh, it has uh, worked uh, pretty much flawlessly. There are two main problems with uh, this though. The first is the limitation of storage. One megabyte uh, is uh, not that much. It's not actually one whole megabyte. For uh, the sketch itself, it uh, takes about 30-40% uh, of that. So we're talking about 600 kilobytes of uh, available storage, which is not very much to say the least. The second big problem is the difficulty of the upload process. We have to flip the switch into flash mode, which be which put the GPIO 0P into ground. You have to open this case, use a proper interface device in order to connect to the USB port of your laptop. Then you have to upload all of the firmware from scratch. It's pretty much a 20 minutes process and sometimes I just don't want to put up with that. I need a faster, more convenient way to upload the new pages to the website. And no, I don't want to implement OTG file transfer. That seems very much unsafe. So since I don't want to switch uh, platform, I need to upgrade to a better ESP8266. I'm talking about the famous version 12E, which is a significant step up uh, to the basic dash 01. First of all, uh, you have uh, four megabytes of flash uh, storage which is four times one megabyte, who knew? But most of all, since you have 11, um, 11 digital pins, you can use an SPI protocol in order to connect a module, let's say an SD module. You can use any type of uh, SPI SD shield. I've used the standard SD one because it has a 3.3 volts V in. So I can power it up right through the Node MCU board. If you use, uh, for instance, uh, this micro SD1, you will need an external regulator because you will need uh, the 5 volts in order to power it up correctly. So the power of the ESP8266 is that you can connect uh, pretty much uh, every module you can think of. Let's see how to get from 600 kilobytes of flash storage to 16 gigabytes for an increment of a uh, gazillion percent, I don't know really, that 16 gigabytes, it's plenty. The wiring is pretty simple. You have to connect uh, the shield to the Node MCU board as you would have done with an Arduino Uno using uh, the SPI protocol. It requires, uh, as usual, four connections. The digital pins are D5 to D8. As I've said before, this shield can operate with uh, 3.3 volts. So I'm gonna power it up straight through the Node MCU board without the need of any external regulator. First of all, we have to install the ESP8266 boards in the Arduino ID. Paste this address in the second page here. Once you've done that, head to Board Manager under Tools, Board, Boards Manager. It will download all the new resources it needs. And now if you search uh, ESP8266, you will find this new tab. I have already installed it. Go ahead, install it. Now go back to Tools. Wait a second. Tools, Boards, and here you can select the ESP8266 version 12E, which is the one I'm gonna use. The sketch itself is part of the ESP8266 web server library, link down below. You can download the library or just the sketch, it's up to you. As far as programming goes, you will need to change only these two lines the SSID and uh, the password using your own uh, network configuration. You can leave all the rest unchanged. 
couple of things to notice. As we can read uh, in the header, the maximum file name is eight characters, so consider that while naming your files. More importantly, the maximum uh, extension length is uh, three characters, therefore we won't be able to use the HTML extension, but we will have to modify all the files to the extension .htm. As we can see here, for instance, the default uh, page is index.htm. Keep that in mind while naming all, your, all of your uh, links inside your website. Then you will need to prepare your uh, SD or micro SD card. Just uh, format it uh, to the file system uh, FAT32. And then you can copy all of your files in here. As you can see, this website is about uh, 30 pages and it weighs uh, 1 megabyte so well I have still uh, 16 gigabytes to go so after having uh, pasted all of the files in the root directory we can uh, wire up the circuit on a test breadboard again the wiring is pretty simple just connect the, the four SPI lines and the VC in the ground make sure to connect the 3.3 volt and not the 5 volt uh, VCC after that you can connect you can insert your SD card and plug in the board itself all right now we go to the PC and we can plug in our board and we can proceed uploading the sketch. Down here you can see the progress while here on the board you can see this uh, small uh, blue LED flashing while we are uploading. It takes a bit and you can uh, check out the status down here and 100% perfect now if we open the serial monitor and we press reset here we can see that we are connected to our network and that the SD card has been read correctly now we can go to our browser and go to this uh, address and doing so we will go to the ESP8266 board perfect we can see the website here we can navigate we can see external uh, external links As long as we are connected to the same network of the board itself as you can see all the files are um, sent correctly even the little icon up here on the left everything works fine perfect now we can go on and finalize this little project Half the point of this upgrade was to unlock a limited storage, but uh, the other half was about uh, the ease of use. In order to simplify the process of loading uh, files to the SD, we will need uh, a nice case and a tidy final setup. First of all, we can solder the two components to a breadboard in order to have the smallest form factor uh, possible. Now, my soldering skills are quite basic, but I make uh, do just barely. It took me about uh, half an hour to solder everything in place. We will need a case that I'm gonna 3D print. 
both micro USB and uh, SD will be easily accessible from the outside in order to make the process of uploading uh, new files or, or new sketches as uh, seamless as possible. We will power everything straight through the micro USB, so no transformers needed. The case itself is, is rather small, it's a two pieces set, set up, all together by four M3 screws. All this takes about uh, seven hours of printing time and about uh, 20 meters of filament. Uh, you can have a much nicer case, you just uh, can go with your favorite design. Once both pieces have been printed, it's time to put everything together. I've made a few mistakes in this design. As you can see, this needs to be one millimeter thicker, while this needs to be at least three millimeters deeper. As you can see, I had to cut the breadboard, otherwise it wouldn't fit. Also, this needs to be um, one and a half millimeter higher. As you can see, there is uh, too much space here. I've uh, used uh, this uh, sponge as a spacer. In this way, it sits uh, right on top of the sponge and uh, it doesn't flex too much. Lastly, you may want uh, this a little bit higher, leaving uh, the SD card a little bit, a little bit uh, more flush uh, to, to the case. I've dealt uh, with uh, all of these uh, little mistakes uh, in the version 2, which is uh, the one on um, Thingiverse, but uh, I didn't bother to print uh, another one, because the functionality is not uh, compromised uh, in the list. The most dangerous thing is uh, this one, but with the sponge it doesn't flex uh, almost uh, at all. The lid pushes uh, right on top on the SD card, on the SD card reader, and on top of the micro SD. So just slot into place. And we can secure everything with uh, four M3 screws. Voila! So there you have it, you just need to upload the files to your SD card, slot it into place with a very satisfying click, plug into a USB charger, the one you use you used to use to, with your phone, now it's all USB-C, isn't it? And now your website is online, it is uh, available uh, from everywhere from your network. Now, if you want to make it uh, available for all over um, the interweb, you have to set up a static address, which I've already done, and uh, go to your router and uh, set it up properly. This can depend very much from the model of your router, so you will have to dig around. It's not that complex, uh, the only problem is that uh, you most likely have um, a dynamic public IP address, so every time you reboot your router, or sometimes uh, even without rebooting, your public IP address uh, will change. So every time you will have to update it manually. Now there are tools online for keeping, tra for keeping track of this. It is manageable, I've already done that. So from this website, which is the same one as before, you can access uh, to this uh, very, let's call it web server, lying on my desk. You can visit my website and you can go to wherever you like. Let's do a quick power consumption check. So using this very convenient uh, USB tester, we can plug in our web server. Uh, 
and see that we can we are drawing about 70 milliamps so as you can see uh, power consumption is really obviously not a problem given the size of uh, this uh, little module so there you have it a very inexpensive uh, and uh, even fun way uh, for um, hosting your uh, very own web 1.0 kind of website but anyway i hope you enjoyed this little project uh, let me know what you think and see you next time